Hey there, everybody. Uh, I got uh, getting ready for harvest here. Dad uh, and Jim have been working hard to get the, the combine ready to go. We got a good chunk of parts here, but the biggest task is yet to come. We've got to put an all new unloading auger in there. So we think we can maybe do that ourselves, but we maybe have some help from our, our John Deere technician. Timing, it's going to be a big thing. I think we can maybe uh, figure out a way to do that ourselves if it's not too hard, but we'll see what happens. Going through, we checked all the belts over, chains, everything of that, uh, all the, you know, your common wear parts. Of course, went through oil changes, getting that done. Got stuff draining on the ground. We got a chemical tote we cut open. Get easy under there to get some oil out so that we don't have oil going everywhere. Got everything going on, working up here as well. Getting all the air filters changed. Just, you know, just going through the machine, making sure everything's ready to go for for harvest here. About how far out for harvest did you say we are, Dad? Oh, beans, are, there aren't any beans turning yet. Usually from the time they start, they're all yellow, it's, they start turning, it's still about four weeks. So uh, we're probably, what's the date, 19th? Oh, maybe a month from now, 20th, around the 20th, I suppose, some beans maybe, maybe corn ready ahead of that, but most of that's just dented. So still four weeks till black layer there. Uh, probably not much before the first of October. Maybe that last week of September. So it's fast approaching. Um, and by everywhere, uh, the lighter ground stuff, you know, you're starting to see that's turning a lot faster than, you know, we've got heavier ground here. So we've got a little bit more. Would really still like to see a rain, but who knows, we might not, might not see a rain here. So I know lots of, lots of corn around here is, is pretty good, but then you get, going west and other directions it's not looking so hot so or, or opposite it is looking very hot it's too hot burning so <laughs> you can see some of the pigs are marked here we got two groups going out here soon and the front pants we got one gate closed you just have to close that other gate up there just doing some, just doing some chores here for my cousin Scott. Uh, he's gone this week. Uh, so the weekend, just, uh, just walking through, making sure the pigs are all right here. Going through and doing chores, I usually don't have to do this because I usually do chores at the night at home. Um, Jim usually is the one that does this, but in this barn, my cousin Scott's barn, we uh, we take down the minimum maximum temperature from the day prior and we record it on a sheet here and that helps us track um, track the pigs pretty good and keep a keep a rough idea on, on the barn uh, some of the other things to keep down from that are water water intake for the pigs just to see how much how much water they're taking in some cases there if they're doing a lot more a lot less it can be dependent on temperature but it also can uh, be a good indicator if maybe uh, like an illness is going through them so you can we can better track that there's just all kinds of metrics metrics we can go through here it's got the alarms and the and the fans it controls everything there uh beyond the beyond the breaker boxes um but that we can just see the the temperatures uh just everything just all the tracking metrics and everything the the waters on these are must be plugged they don't ever show so just showing me going down there going down to water we go into water history and it shows zero well obviously they're drinking more than more than zero gallons a day i'm trying something out here i'm filming on my my iphone uh the camera in that i have a feeling is a little better than the one i use on my gopro so i'm going to try as much as i can use use this i've got a i've got a little stand ordered to to be able to it's basically a selfie stick that i can hold out there and and record with that i still use my my gopro when i'm when I'm mounting stuff, I mean this thing, this the stand I bought won't be able to mount on anything, but the GoPro does. So this montages and stuff, I can I can clamp it down to. I would do that. So doing a test run here, the the spacing might be might be different in my background, or it might be zoomed in. I'm just doing some some experiments with that. So so bear with me. I can get more use out of these gloves. I only got about one and a half finger finger down. So probably keep riding those for another couple of years. Out in the road here. Um, I'm out uh, in South Dakota right now. Um, this this is an indication. It's kind of a misdirection, but I'm going to see someone, uh, a college friend of mine. Um, I don't know if I'm going to film anything with it, 
with him today, but uh, you might recognize him. And if, if any of you are fans of the channel or keeping up, you're gonna know who it is just by me talking about this. Um, so nope, I'm out, in, uh, out west of Mitchell, South Dakota, um, going across here. Crops are looking in pretty rough shape uh, going across here. They're a lot, a lot drier it looks like than we are. We're doing better off on, on moisture. We got a bunch of rain this morning before I left. Um, and we've been getting a bunch of rain at home finally. A little late, but we'll take it. If you can see, there's some pretty dead spots out there in that field of beans right there. I just went past a field of corn that was, wasn't was so good looking, pretty brown. See here, the corn's a lot, a lot lighter. Brown, almost, it's uh, run out of moisture almost. That's not corn. Well, here's a uh, here's my mystery destination. Let's see if some of you recognize it from this far away. Well, if you haven't figured it out, I'm out at uh, Sunny Farms. I'm here with Brian Sunny. Um, Cole's uh, in bed yet. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> feed a we're gonna feed a load of cattle here this morning. So, so Brian, uh, uh, how are you guys? Is uh, how are your cattle doing this year? How the crops? Everything? How's farming out? Well, out in South Dakota. The, the cows and calves are running out of grass. I mean, the, the pasture's getting down there enough. People are starting to wean. I haven't, we're gonna actually uh, run them through and give them their first round of shots this week and put them back with their mother so they've got that protection when we do wean them. And uh, the crops have surprisingly hung in there for the year we've had. We've had so much heat and drought, but, and, and not that we had that much uh, subsoil moisture either because you know from late july on last year we really haven't had hardly any moisture but right i guess it was there from 19 yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so now the we've got bred heifers in the feedlot we're gonna feed them you can run the feed wagon if you want sounds good check that out so there was an onslaught of former college kids here this weekend i don't know was there eight or ten yeah it was eight of us i think in total yeah so and so I don't know. There's vehicles in the yard from last night, and I have no idea who's in the basement. And they'll come dragging themselves out sooner or later. <laughs> so, all right, let's do this. That's like probably the biggest difference between between them and cattle and us and hogs. They're when they have when they have cattle, they're up every day feeding them. Um, we're just checking the hogs. I mean, the feeders are automatic, so that's it's pretty easy for us compared to. What they got to do every day so do you guys have a mill do you grind your own feed or do you have that delivered or that no all of our feed now is is delivered so we okay. used to we used to grind and mix our own feed yep. um when we farrowed to finish and yep. then it just got that's the nature of the beast everyone everyone got into into buying feed and getting feed delivered just just easier for everybody so do you uh have feeder pigs delivered isolines or what do you or do you don't Finishing. Right, so we just have they come they come from a, a farrowing site typically, and then they go to a nursery, and then we just we just finish the pigs is what we do. Yeah. So how long are they there? Oh, there we have about uh, about oh I'd say about three three groups a year I suppose. Yeah. Two and a half. Yep. So. That. Um, corn that was on alfalfa ground is just 18 acres but we cut that and put it in the pit the other day it's funny how uh, that's had about 80 hundreds of rain on it since we cut it and the field that it was in didn't rain over there so it actually got more rain in the pit here than it would have in the field but we've got another 18 acres of sorghum that's really green and would be too wet to cut right now so when it gets more mature, we'll put that on top. Okay, just as a forage crop. Yeah. And then that, we always like to put the wetter stuff on top for a couple reasons. You have less of a crust, of course. We don't tarp out here. I, hardly anyone tarp. I think that's a territorial thing or, uh, you know, or a dairy thing, you know, you yeah. don't want any, but we don't do it. But, so you put that sorghum on top so you have less, uh, you know, crusting it's wetter but also that juice from the excess moisture is going to soak into that dry corn okay and then maybe it won't run out the pit like some really wet stuff sure. will. so that's our thought process on that and you guys cut your own stuff no we don't uh, about five years ago we started hiring it done okay 
and uh, I'll also add that I'm not used to somebody being taller than me. <laughs> Yeah, I get that a lot. I come from a lion He's got dolphin. stilettos. Huh? Yeah, I got, uh, <laughs> got my cowboys on, so. <laughs> yeah. But we, no, we, um, for what little bit we cut every year, it takes us three, four hours instead of um, spending two, three days getting the equipment ready and then cutting for a day. Yep. So uh, what little bit I cut, I can't really justify on all that yep. equipment. So. 68. 68 had a replacement heifers out there, and uh, we're just kind of growing them up, and also running out of feed here. But so they're getting a half a pound of this protein supplement a day with this ration, and uh, and then I also force feeding them this garlic mineral to see if how much it helps keep the flies down. So they're getting about 10 pounds a day of this. Which I eyeball. Yeah, it's precise measurement there. Yep. Yep. It's about that much in a bucket is precise measurement of that. And I have not started feeding any of that to the silage yet. So it's a little bit of a dry ration right now, but like I said, you know, we're not so much going for performance on these red heifers as we are just letting them grow up. Sure. So we're just going to go with ground hay and corn. And that's all they're getting right now. little dusty here but we're making it work I'm feeding it's an all new experience for me I have never ever fed cattle before so this is this is really interesting well you don't have to sugarcoat it how'd I do well anytime you have a farm kid do something they're gonna figure it out it's new to you, yeah. And you know, sometimes less is more when you got somebody telling you what to do. So, <laughs> figured it out. Do you think the heifers noticed? I, I have a feeling they maybe yeah, did. <laughs> they had a little. There's there's something different. Not, here not the usual feeding routine. <laughs> <laughs> he might have went around more than once to get the feed wagon empty, yeah. but he got her done. And I would much rather have you do that than put it all in like the first half of the bunks, and then they're all crowding yeah. there. So thank you for yeah. getting it spread out all the way. <laughs> Oh hey. my gosh, is, is that Garrett from Wagner Family Farm? You know it. Rise and shine, sleepyhead. <laughs> Those of you that don't know, uh, Cole and I went to college together. That's how we know each other, and he's pretty much the reason I got into, into YouTube farm, and I've got his old camera, which died on me this morning. The battery was dead when I went to run it, so I'm using my iPhone camera and just been testing that out lately, seeing how it works so far. So far, it's a good. The, the audio might be a little shaky. I probably covered up the the microphone and whatever a couple times, but that's, I'm, his, I'm his biggest fan. He is. That's he is. I watched every video four times. <laughs> My favorite one was the one his dad was in. He's kind of cute. Yeah, that's uh, that's everyone's favorite. So, but no, uh, do have a lot of fun with this and get to do this and glad we got to reconnect, stay in touch after college and. And drink some brewskis. And drink some brewskis, you bet. So One or two too many. I don't know if that's it, but see ya. Have a good one, everybody. Subscribe. And to him, too. <laughs>